Hey everyone, welcome to the final Mac break of 2021. I wanted to take this opportunity to wish you and your family a Merry Christmas and a prosperous 2022. I also want to thank you for supporting this channel with your comments, your likes, and even your dollars by purchasing one of our plugins and tutorials. Mark and I truly appreciate it. So for this final video of the year, I want to do something a bit different. A few weeks ago, I purchased software from a company called Topaz Labs that uses machine learning to upscale video and remove noise. Well, to put the software through the test, I decided to shoot HD video at night using a Sony a7S III and a GoPro Hero. I chose these cameras for two reasons. The Sony camera is really good in low light, and the GoPro camera is horrible in low light, and I wanted to see how the app handles both. So, here are my results. Before we get started, the software I'm about to show you is called Video Enhance AI. The app is sold directly on Topaz Labs' website for about $200 US. At the moment, you can get it for $149 until the end of the month. You can also download a trial version if you want to give it a spin on your own footage. Once you launch the software, go to the Preferences and make sure the AI processor is set for GPU processing, not CPU. For my tests, I'm running an M1 Max MacBook Pro with 32 gigs of memory. If you have more than 8 gigabytes of RAM on your system, I recommend maxing out the RAM allocation for the best performance. For the first test, I'm going to upscale HD footage to 4K that was shot on my Sony a7S III. I'll start by dragging a clip into the preview window. I can scrub the clip using the playhead and set the zoom level of the clip here. I'll set this to 200% since that's the percentage of upscaling I'll be applying. In the area to the right, there's a section labeled AI Model. The smart folks at Topaz Labs spend months training their software to learn how to interpret the image quality based on millions of data points. You can either use a built-in AI model found in this menu, or you can have the app make a suggestion by clicking the light bulb icon. The first step is to choose a video quality. This Sony clip is really clean 10-bit footage with a few visible artifacts, so I'll choose high. I'll leave the video type set to progressive. Under video artifact type, I'm presented with the types of artifacts that are common to most clips either high compression, noise, blurry, motion jitter, or none. I'll choose none because I want the AI to preserve the detail already in the movie. Based on these parameters, the app recommends three potential AI models I can choose from from this menu. Rolling over each model will display a tooltip of what they'll do. Next, I'll choose the output size from this menu, in this case, 4K UHD. The next step is to have the app generate a comparison grid so I can pick the best one. I'll click the Compare button and a 4-up window appears. The original image appears in the upper left, and the AI models appear in the remaining quadrants. With my mouse, I can pan around the image looking for areas that have a lot of fine detail or darker areas that would typically appear blocky. While they're all very good, I'm partial to the Artemis High Quality model. However, before I commit to rendering, which can take a fair amount of time, I can have the app generate a 30-second motion preview of all of them by clicking this button. In the lower left corner, the app shows an estimate of how long it takes for each frame to be processed. With my M1 Max GPU, each frame takes a little over half a second. Once the processing has completed, the app will loop playback, and I can pan around the image to compare the resulting image quality of each model. It's clear to me that the Artemis model is giving me the cleanest 4K output quality, especially in these areas of high detail and in these solid areas of the columns. The model that will be rendered is the one that has the blue flag. To choose a different model, just click on another quadrant. There are a few remaining options worth noting. Under the grain heading, you can add grain back into the image, choosing the amount and size of the grain. Now that may seem a bit counterintuitive since the whole point is to reduce grain. But funny enough, the AI is so good that I've discovered that the image can often appear too clean to my eyes. So I'll boost this just slightly. Under video format, I can choose from a number of rendering options, including Apple ProRes HQ. Additionally, I can set in and out points so I don't have to render the entire clip. The last step is to click the Start Processing button. Then go get a sandwich because even with an M1 Mac, the processing can take some time. While that's rendering, let me show you what I did with the GoPro Hero 9 clip. The only change I made to the settings was that I set the video artifact type to high compression. Because as you can see as I pan around the image, this 8-bit GoPro clip looks like mush in the lower part of the building. 
Comparing the three AI models that the app suggests, I think the Artemis D Halo 4K looks slightly better than the others. So I'll make sure that one is selected and start processing. During processing, I can still pan around the image, and you can really see what a huge difference the AI is making when I compare it with the original. And remember, I'm upscaling this 8-bit HD clip to 4K. So now let's look at the final comparisons. If you can, watch in 4K on a larger screen. Then let me know what you think. Thank you.